What we are hearing from average San Franciscans, it's hard for people to survive and live in San Francisco. A third of the downtown is empty. I don't know how many 50 to 100,000 people maybe have moved out of San Francisco. Businesses are closing. Small businesses can't operate. So the revenue has gone down, but the budget keeps going up. It's gone up almost five times. When I was on the board 20 years ago, you looked at a three, three and a half billion dollar budget. It's now almost 15 billion. Wow. What happened? My guest today is Tony Hall, former supervisor from San Francisco. Today he'll talk about why San Francisco has an annual budget of $15 billion, but is still struggling to provide basic services, and what has made it so expensive. I'll tell you how it happens. It's from the usage of nonprofits. Nonprofits that are indiscriminate and answerable to nobody. That's the real question that people should be concerned about. I'm Siamai Korami. Welcome to California Insider. Tony, it's great to have you back on. Welcome back. Siamak, thank you very much. I, I appreciate being here with you. It's, it's not only fun, it, it's good for the people to see this type of format that you're doing, and I wish you nothing but but success in the coming days because your platform is going to grow, 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 and people need to hear what CMAC Karami and his crew have to say. Well, thank you, Tony. And we're actually bringing CaliforniaInsider.com, which is going to be our own news platform. And we're going to have our show there, and we're going to have content from Epoch Times and other, other news outlets. So there people well. will be able to go to CaliforniaInsider.com and see everything. Yeah. That's yeah. perfect. Yeah. That's good. And, That's and today, we're excited to have you on because we want to talk to you about your city. My city. And we care about your city, San okay. Francisco. We were very concerned about the budgets because the city is losing some businesses. These businesses that are going out, like shopping centers, hotels, and these are taxpayers. And there's numbers that about $500 million is going to be lost next year. What are your thoughts on that? Well, the $500 million you refer to as projected loss uh, in, in tax revenue, true. A lot of businesses have closed up, gone out of business, leaving San Francisco. But every year, the administration comes out and says, we're, we're going to run at a loss. We've got to cut back, cut back. What's more important, CMAC, is how did the budget become the size that it is in 20 years? It's gone up almost five times. When I was on the board 20 years ago, you looked at a three, three and a half billion dollar budget. It's now almost 15 billion. Wow. What happened? There's only 750,000 people left in San Francisco, not the 850 that were there 20 years ago. How did the budget grow so big in that short a period of time? That's the real question that people should be concerned about. We are going to experience a loss in revenue because businesses are moving out. But what about the size of government? It's ridiculous. How did it grow that big? So it's now less people in San Francisco That's compared correct. to 20 That's years correct. ago. Is because that a third of the downtown is empty. I don't know how many 50 to 100,000 people maybe have moved out of San Francisco. Businesses are closing. Small businesses can't operate. So the revenue has gone down, but the budget keeps going up. How does that happen? I'll tell you how it happens. It's from the usage of nonprofits. Nonprofits that are indiscriminate and answerable to nobody. Can you explain that? So yes. it's not the city employees or is there No. Well let's let's look at it. <clears throat> what is the basic function of government? To supply the citizens, the constituents with safety, utilities, power, the streets all the things that the private enterprise cannot do. It's better done through the government. That was the original function of government. Forty years ago, they would supply this, departments. There was 99 departments in the city and county of San Francisco responsible for the various things they were providing the citizens. In the last 20 to 30 years, they've, our elected leaders have utilized uh, nonprofits to devise the program and they say we're going to use this nonprofit to provide these services. And the nonprofits are accountable to no one. Only the person that, that 
approves them, the mayor, the board of supervisors, the elected officials. Who monitors the nonprofits? Who monitors their expenditures? In other words, you're a nonprofit, you come to me, you give me a contract, I look at it, I approve so many millions. Your administrative costs is all included in that. Your, your overhead, your administrative costs, as long as that's disclosed up front, you get the contract for so many millions for the next year, two years, three years, whatever. These are funds that the taxpayer never approves of. The mayor doesn't turn around and go to the taxpayer and say, I want to use your money to fund this nonprofit, and here's the services they're going to provide. That doesn't happen. They just decide we're going to use nonprofits to service the needs of veterans, service the needs of the homeless. You have over 60 nonprofits right now working with the homeless industry in San Francisco, and I call it an industry because that's what it is. It's the nonprofit homeless industry service providers. There's over 60 of them. San Francisco does not have the expertise to monitor the ongoings of those nonprofits. We don't have the expertise and we don't have the personnel. The controller's office claims that they monitor it, but they don't have the personnel. Number one. Number two, very few of the people in civil service in San Francisco know what true public administration is. They know how to give away money. They know how to devise programs but they don't know what true public administration is. That's something that's gone out the window. So you elect people who get an office and they come up with programs. I'm going to solve this problem for you. I want to give so much to this nonprofit. And that's how it happens. They grow exponentially. The nonprofits have grown the budget of the city and county of San Francisco exponentially to their usage. So this 3.5 billion has gone up to 14 and a half, something like Almost that. Almost 15 billion. Almost 15 billion. Right. And right. a lot of this money is going to nonprofits. Correct. Providing services. Correct. But it's not very clear what. Where not it is. very clear what they're providing. Who is monitoring them? We have over 600 nonprofit organizations doing business with the city and county of San Francisco. Who is monitoring their activities? Who is saying, wait a minute, the services they're providing, are they worth it? Who is monitoring where that money's going? No one. There's 600 nonprofits doing business with the city and county of San Francisco, doing business that was never approved by the public. And it doesn't look like things are not as good as 20 years ago, right? San Francisco, or, or is San Francisco in much better shape than 20 years yes, ago? Yes, because it? you had people elected to office and ran departments that were schooled in public administration. They were people who believed in, in the um, fiduciary aspect of spending the public's money. They were accountable to the public. They believed that the public should benefit from, that's what true public administration is. That's, that's gone. These people that we've elected into office in the last 30, 35 years are interested in one thing and one thing only. Getting to the next office, because they all want to be a politician. They all want to be president of the United States. They all want to save the world. So they come up with different programs. Then they devise ways to pay for those programs. Usually, more often than not, it's through the usage of nonprofits. And they themselves appoint with the committee or the, the approval of the mayor or the mayor with the approval of the board, they appoint the nonprofits to be used to deliver the services. Now, let me go one step further. What happens during election time? That elected official turns around and looks at the nonprofit, hey, I need a donation for my campaign. Now you see why there's so many nonprofits doing business with so us. So they keep. That's donating right. to the government officials that's and right. the government that's officials. That's right. That's how they stay in office. That's how they perpetuate themselves in office. That's how care not cash was done. You reach out, you establish a half a dozen, a dozen, two dozen nonprofits to deliver the care, take away the cash, but deliver the care, which is five times more expensive than the cash, and they give back during campaign time. Those nonprofits give back in the way of donations. Follow the money. Take a look at the elected officials, especially in San Francisco, but statewide, it's not much different. Follow 
the money. Look at who's giving them the money. And there are some good nonprofits too in oh, the mix of. Oh, of course. Look at there. There's there's several types of nonprofits. CMEC. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. In the old days, you had faith-based organizations. Catholic Charities was a big one. Episcopalian Church had them. All the churches, all the different denominations had true charitable organizations that were nonprofits. Their mission was to distribute charity. They fundraise to the public. There's a difference there between nonprofits whose mission it is to supply services for the government. And the idea of a nonprofit is the income that they get is not supposed to go back into the pockets of the nonprofits. However, the catch is all the administrative costs and the overhead are covered in the contract. So I'm not a tax accountant, but any tax accountant can tell you there's different types of nonprofits. Not all charities, well, let's put this, all charities are nonprofits, but all nonprofits are not charities. That's for sure. And the tax code uh, establishes the difference between different types of nonprofits. They're all, most of them are tax exempt. So when you understand when you're dealing with 600 of them, none of them are paying taxes. And they have kind of found a way, they're essentially playing the role of the government, in a they sense. They are, they are delivering the services that the government in the old days used to deliver with their own departments. The department heads were responsible to the mayor who appointed them, and the mayor was responsible to the people. That's gone. That doesn't work that way anymore. The department heads are running a department that might have 10 or 12 contracts out there to nonprofits. He doesn't have the wherewithal to monitor them. And I think, what is the Department of Social Services right now has 60. I mean, who has the personnel to monitor what they're doing? So you see, this is very complicated. But this is why government has grown. And people don't realize this. People don't, they're too busy to look into, oh, well, you know, the government will take care of itself. Who can tell you this? Ask the average person on the street, what is the cost of your government now compared to 20 years ago? They don't know. They're too busy, nor should they know. Nor should they know. And from what we are hearing from average San Franciscans, it's, it's become very expensive. It's hard for people to survive in San Francisco and live in San Francisco now. Very much it? so. It's it, despite the fact that this, this is wealth coming to the city, right, to the county and city. The, the money has come. The, the government has a lot of money. But somehow, it seems like this money is not it's misused. Reaching. It's mismanaged. It's mismanaged. That's why the cost of government is so high. It's mismanagement. Nothing else. Mismanagement. What makes up mismanagement? A lack of knowledge about what true public administration is. You mentioned the public administration. Uh, what is it like now, and what was it when you were around? Well, in, the, in, in, the in my in day, <coughs> like I was a, I, my major in college was public administration. I don't think they study that anymore. I don't even know if it's a major. You could take the whole the board of supervisors up there. I don't think there's one person there that ever studied public, true public administration. They can tell you about, you know, how the government works, maybe. They can tell you about programs they devise and, and uh, legislation that they've proposed. But they don't know anything about the benefit, the fiduciary responsibility that goes with being an elected public official. The fiduciary responsibility, they don't know what you're talking about. How does my legislation affect the public in the long run? That's the name of the game. And if you can't answer that, What's the cost? What are the benefits? What's all the of those cost? Things. What is the benefit? Is my constituents, are the people in the city and county of San Francisco better off now because of my reg legislation or are they worse? They can't answer that. They don't care. They care about getting their legislation through so they can say, look what I did and I run for the next office. That's the style of today. Unfortunately, I hope it's not the style forever. I hope we're going through a a period of time, you know, where people are going to wise up and say, let's hold them accountable. Let's hold that mayor accountable for the nonprofits that she has employed. So, Tony, you guys are spending a lot more than, than when, the 20 years ago. It's like four or five times. Correct. The budget. Right. How's the city doing? Well, ask the average San Franciscan. 
the quality of life is nowhere near as good as it was 20 years ago. It's good. Don't get me wrong. Quality of life in San Francisco is good by worldwide standards, but it's not what it was 20 years ago because now we have to worry about our cars being broken into. Now we have to worry if someone's breaking into my house, it takes the cops five to 20 minutes to arrive rather than a minute and a half, which was the standard 20 years ago. Uh, we had a lot more small businesses operating in the city. And so you had the shoe shine guy, the cake maker, you had all, we don't have that anymore. They're gone, they're gone, they're gone. They can't make it. The regulations are eating them up. The smash and grab has destroyed small business, uh, any business in San Francisco. Walgreens just closed their key store in San Francisco because they can't make it on Sutter and Powell. They're closing that. Number one key store in the city for drug stores. I mean, it just goes on and on and on and on. So is that better than it was 20 years ago? No. We're a lot worse off. We have a lot less alternatives to shop at. Uh, no, it's nowhere near, the quality of life is nowhere near what it was. So the city which is responsible for safety yes. and other services, there's a lot of services that right. the city provides. Um, but then th there's some nonprofits that, uh, you guys are funding a lot of nonprofits to do a lot of extra services for you. Well, what? it's not working. It's not working. Guess what, guys? The nonprofit world is not delivering the services we need. The roads are worse off now than they were 20 years ago. Crime is worse off. Uh, cleanliness in the city is worse off. The homeless themselves are worse off because now it's become a, a, a health hazard, a safety and health hazard. It's not just a vagrancy thing. Now you've got health hazards. So the health department, whatever they're doing, they're not doing their job. So no, the city is nowhere near, nowhere near what it was 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago as far as basic services that the city is supposed to be supplying the resident. We have a, a nonprofit doing business with the city right now, $18 million contract, more than that, $18.5 million contract over three years to provide safety and oversight in some of our troubled areas. That's a lot of money we could be putting into the police department who are trained to provide safety. It's a lot of money. We can make our police department whole. Why train people to do a halfway job at safety? Why not hire more police officers? That's just an example, and that's all over the country now. You have different organizations, nonprofits moving in to provide a level of safety that the money would be much better spent having a professional police department funded, fully funded. And they're not as, as regulated as the actual the police department. No, not at all. Well, they're not cities. trained. They're not trained in, in safety, providing uh, safety for citizens. They're just there. It's just a nonprofit getting the money, staffing it with people. This particular nonprofit is staffing it with people that the, the requisite is they had to be incarcerated before. This episode is sponsored by Midas Gold Group. Do you feel the bills are getting higher and higher? Every time you check out the grocery store, do you feel your monthly discretionary money has decreased, although your income increases yearly? Inflation is eating away at your wealth. Digital wallets and central banks' digital currencies are destroying financial privatization. Only gold and silver are constitutional forms of money. Our privacy was to be protected against unlawful watch and seizure. Midas Gold Group will help you take control of your finances and protect your wealth and your privacy. Pulling money out of the questionable banking and investment system is the way to privatize your finances as the elite push us towards digital wallets and central bank digital currency. Protect your wealth with real money. Deal with the best at Midas Gold Group, a proud America First company. You can check them out at MidasGoldGroup.com Click on the link below and check them out. Now let's go back to the interview. Yeah, and when it comes to crime, uh -huh. you know, like we're hearing from people that tourists come to San Francisco, they get really disappointed, you know, it's a beautiful place. And then they, not everybody knows that they shouldn't leave anything in their car. Like, it's like if sometimes you go to third world countries and you can leave something in your car. It has this average San Franciscans 
kind of gotten frustrated with what's going on? Because these are the services the government has to provide for the people. Well, right? sure, yeah, absolutely, they're, they're frustrated. We have now, it's acceptable for us to lock our car, take everything out of the car. It's acceptable for us to say, oh, we're gonna, my car is going to be broken into two or three times a year. When did that become acceptable? To have to take additional precautions against thievery. When did it become acceptable for stealing and crime to become part of our way of life? When did that happen? Is it because we're told daily that, hey, yeah, you're living in a modern city, you gotta live with this stuff? No, there has to be zero tolerance when it comes to crime. When it comes to people exploiting people, taking stuff from other people, hurting other people, zero, zero tolerance. And there has to be circumstances. There has to be circumstances for people who engage in crime. And if there's not, it just becomes acceptable. And you are in that phase now. Mm -hmm. Everyone, when we have guests that come to our studio here in Weir and Irvine, and I, I invite them to lunch, they are very afraid and concerned of putting something in the car. Yeah. And, and, and it's shocking to us here that you always have to take your backpack or whatever laptop you have and never put anything in the car. If the people responsible for your safety are not doing their job, either because they don't know how to do it or because they're not allowed to do it, because no one else is looking out for you, you know? We have a police department in San Francisco that's 70% funded. We, we could use another 500 officers according to the charter. We certainly could use them on the street. They can't respond. So people have to look out for themselves. Why isn't the mayor taking that money that she's given to nonprofits and give it to the police department? Because this is one of the main uh, services that uh, a, a city Safety offers. Safety right? is a basic service that the, that government has to provide for its citizens. If you don't, you don't have a civilized society. You do not have a civilized society when crime is allowed to go on and run rampant. And I'm not talking about, you know, anything to do with criminal justice reform here. I understand that, I appreciate it, but when criminals are allowed to run free without being prosecuted or held accountable, without circumstances, you have a breakdown in civilization. And that's what we're experiencing in San Francisco. But you have all these nonprofits that mm -hmm. are providing services. You know, it's somehow y the main safety part, it's missing in the big, this huge budget that but you guys have. the nonprofits are not interested. But They're not interested in your safety. They're interested in delivering the services that they're contracted for, whether it's clothing, uh, shoes for the homeless, whatever, clothing for the homeless. They're not in the safety uh, game. That's the police department. That's the fire department. That's not the, non, the duty of the nonprofits. They're given a contract for millions so to So the money is do. gone to them. Exactly. Instead of going to the safety. That's right. And who makes that decision? Not the public. I don't know if the public votes for that. I've never heard had a vote for that. There's no public initiative put out there. The mayor makes the decision. The board of supervisors makes that decision. We're going to give that money to the nonprofit. Public doesn't weigh in on it. Doesn't the public want that? How are they able to do that? With They've become used to a growing way of life, CMAC. <clears throat> Look, most of the people that have come to California, most of the immigrants, most of the people coming across the border are coming from countries that have a huge government. The government does everything for them. So these people are coming here and they expect the government to do everything for them. Everything has gone through the government. The government just keeps growing by providing these services to meet the demand. So some people call that socialism, whatever. The government is growing exponentially to meet the demand. People coming to this country, people say, well, let's let the government take, let's let the government take care of it. Private enterprise is the last vehicle the government looks at. They had a perfect system 30 and 40 years ago of faith-based organizations attending to the poverty needs, the homeless needs, 
Why didn't we back them up? That was their business. They knew what they were doing. Why didn't we give them more money? Because they were tied to a religion, so we can't have them in government. We got to be religion neutral, like gender neutral and all that stuff. We have to be neutral. Can't take it away from those people that are doing it. And let's fund our own. Let's put a nonprofit in business. However, the nonprofit has to have certain regulations, it has to be uh, minority owned or this or that or the other, certain regulations which make that tainted, if you will. The nonprofit world is a whole different animal. It's a whole different animal. You need a tax consultant here to tell you about that and how it's allowed to go on. But we had organizations that were experts in dealing with poverty, homelessness, uh, mental health. We had a lot of organizations that were doing that. We should have backed them up rather than taking the money from them or cutting them off and having the government do it through a new nonprofit that was designed by the government that we, we're, we're, that's why there's so much money being spent. The old days, the faith-based organizations didn't rely only on the government for money. They did fundraising to the outside. They were still a nonprofit, tax-exempt status, but they were a charity. They raised funds from people to do what they do. And they most nonprofits should work like that. You know, you, <laughs> you have to work, you have to get the donation, you have to get the support. You should do a special show just on nonprofits. Now I they're don't getting contracts yes. from the... Yeah. The nonprofits that I know of doing business for the city, those administrators are making as much as anybody in a for-profit organization. Their overhead expenses are being covered and under the fair compensation rule that the IRS and, and the national government requires of people, they have to be compensated and according to their peer in the for-profit sector. That's where the money's going, CMAC. That's where the money's going. So essentially, going. if you're a CEO of a big nonprofit, he, they have to pay you the same amount as a CEO close, of a... Close, close to it. Or close to and it. And as long as that's disclosed up front in our contract, no one questions it. That's we have to examine that. the whole nonprofit world. And further than examine it, we have to have somebody to monitor it. And I want to go one step further. I think before any monies are expended for nonprofits to provide government services, it should be up to a vote of the people. That's what I think. Now, maybe that's revolutionary. I don't know. This is a very important aspect of what's happening in our lives is the usage of nonprofits. And I'm not against the establishment of nonprofits. If you look them up, there's charities and then 501 c 3 yeah. Which but we are a nonprofit too, Epoch Times yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. But, but it's a different thing. It's a different thing altogether. You're not, are you under contract to a no. government entity? No. <laughs> are you getting five million a year to do your show? No. There's nonprofits in San Francisco that are getting paid to speak on behalf of the government. I guarantee you the, the, this latest uh, push to publicize San Francisco, there was a four and a half million dollar contract given out. I'll bet you they're a nonprofit. And do they uh, help the, the government officials in any way? Well, they, they deliver on the objectives of what the elected is, wants to happen. If I want to solve a problem out there, what I should do is go to the people who are affected and say, okay, how do we solve this problem? But if I'm a politician in San Francisco, I'm going to say, ah, I'm going to solve this problem for you. I've got a nonprofit that's going to do it. These are my boys. They're going to take care of it. And you go, okay. And then campaign season, hey, boys, you got to kick over here. That's the way it works. I don't know how to put it any blunter than that. That's the way it works. They devise nonprofits to reach the political goals that they define, not for the benefit of the constituent or the taxpayer. And that's why our government is now five, ti five times bigger. And the money is coming from the government. Government itself. money's coming from the revenue, a... from the revenue, from the businesses, from the property taxes, public money. Well, that's where the funny thing, this isn't money that they're make and pull in from a different uh, fund. This is public money. It's coming from small business, big business, taxpayer money. 
It's just mismanagement. And why is it mismanagement? Because they don't know any better. They never studied that in school. They don't know it. Hey, I want to be a politician. Hey, you know, uh, that's what it's all about. They want to be a politician to be go down in history as a savior. It's just getting what I want, my name, my 10 seconds in the sun. And the press is their, is their talking boy. That's the, that's the political arm. You get very few uh, organizations like this to tell the truth. That's not all negative. I'm not being negative. I'm the most positive guy in the world because uh, I think what we need to do is eliminate the march towards socialism or government providing everything. And let's re-examine the private sector. Can they deliver services better than the public sector? I think they can in some ways. That profit motive, profit is a very strong incentive for business. Allow people to make a profit and they're gonna find a way to make it work. Because if they're not making a profit, they don't go in the business. Nonprofits don't care about, it. they don't have that incentive. All they care about, the money. Give me my contract. Profit is out the window, but let's re-examine the profit sector because it's a very strong indicator. It's a very strong motivator for good results. If you haven't checked out CaliforniaInsider.com, we highly recommend you do that now because we're going to have a lot of news and videos there. And on top of what we have there right now, we're building a really big platform to cover what's happening in California so you can be informed. We're going to have more shows, more videos from all aspects of life in California. Go to CaliforniaInsider.com and we'll see you there. Now, Tony, uh, do you have any advice? You mentioned that the people that are there right now, they don't have public administration experience or they didn't get trained on it. You know, it's true, most of us, like in that generation, I think that everybody wanted to be in finance and other types of work. And we kind of lost the we sense lost of service and... Well, the public administration is not the most exciting field in the world. I mean, when, you, when I went to college, you know, only the nerds took it. But if you wanted to go in government to serve people, you had to learn about how, how to administrate the government. Um, you have to have a sense of a uh, fiduciary sense of responsibility with the people's money. That's basic, and that was basic in the field of public administration. How do you handle the public resources? Can you direct personnel? Can you uh, analyze direct uh, budgets and personnel? All this stuff. So that's kind of gone by the wayside. My advice to young people, if you're going to go into government service, learn the fundamentals. Learn what is important to be successful. You got a football team, teach them how to tackle and how to block. Basic fundamentals. Go in public service, teach them how to handle the public's money in the most effective and efficient manner. It certainly isn't done by appointing nonprofits that the public knows nothing about. So, my advice to the young people today study public administration. The outcome for our society would be tremendous. San Francisco what it seems like from the average resident's perspective, you know, they have been paying a lot more for the government. However it is, maybe there's like the city could become wealthier, but they're getting less. And uh, th th essentially a lot of leaders come out of San Francisco. They've been promoting a lot of, uh, is, is the public in San Francisco being numb or like they haven't paid attention or what, what is the public doing in well, San Francisco? Let's start with the fact that San Francisco is a hotbed of political activism as opposed to other parts of the state or in other parts of the country. It is political. And people have become numb. Yes, they're not demanding anything of these people. And San Francisco is unique in that way. The political machine has a foothold on how the government runs and they perpetuate themselves. And the people can't do much about it unless they rise up in a cohesive, collective voice of revolution and throw them all out. They can't do it. They, it's not worth it. The people are too busy. Mom and pop are raising the kids and sending them to school, the highest tuition in the United States probably. 
They're busy. They haven't got time to, to watch what Joe Blow's doing in public office. Stop and think about it, folks. You're, what you're paying for government services is five times what it was 20 years ago. It's probably five times 20 years ago what it was before that. Through the same amount, less amount of services, less amount of people. Uh, I, you've heard me say this before, we're paying more for the administration of homeless services than any city in the world. We're paying far in excess of $100,000 per homeless person in San Francisco. How does that happen? Who's making the money? The homeless guy on the street isn't doing it. Who's making the money? The nonprofit homeless industry service providers are making the money. Three quarters of that money is going into the administration, employing people, and the remainder goes to the homeless people. You get rid of the homeless prob problem in San Francisco, and there's a way to do that. There's a way to do that, and we don't have time now to go into that, but I would be more than happy to, to sit with you and tell you what my thoughts on it are. But if you get rid of that homeless problem in San Francisco, you're going to have thousands and thousands of people out of work. People are bailing on California in record numbers. half of Californians are considering moving. It's a domino effect. What's happening? Where is the state headed? People were tricked and fooled. We're being told everything's fine, this is normal. People are making money off our problems. We love regulations in this state. We just love it. We can control how people live. Do you think San Francisco will come back? soon you know I, I i would hope from the bottom of my heart it does I, I i hope it does i think i think people are reaching a point a breaking point where they're saying enough is enough is it going to take the average person to throw everybody out change everything around i don't know uh cmac i i i think san francisco will come it always has i mean during the earthquake and the war and whatnot San Francisco has resurfaced. I think it will, I do. Uh, but boy, it's gonna take some shaking up. It's the homeless thing is killing us, safety is killing us. They're gonna to have to put a sign up, the inn is closed. We're gonna treat our own people for their root cause of homelessness and take care of them. We're not treating the world, we're not treating 17,000 people. We're gonna treat seven to 8,000 people the right way when it comes to crime. We're not going to buy into all this stuff about criminal justice reform unless it's real. It does real results for the people that are paying the bill. Zero tolerance when it comes to crime. I don't care what the, if it's $450 or $1,000 felony misdemeanor, no more. Because now it's ruined business. It's ruined the lifeblood of the city. If we don't correct these things, San Francisco's not going to turn around. It's not going to turn around under the present leadership, no. They will talk like it will, but it's not going to. Talk is cheap. Put the right programs in action to make things happen, that's difficult. Now, do you have any other thoughts for our audience, Tony? For your audience? Yeah. Keep watching this guy, CMAC. That's what my advice. My thoughts are, you need this program to go nationwide. People have to hear what you're doing. They have to see your program. That's my thoughts are tune in to CaliforniaInsider.com, whatever the website's going to be, because the media is the spokesperson for the rascals in office. By and large, 80% of the media is just the mouthpiece of those in office. We need an independent person who's got the guts to stand up and, and tell it the way it is. Otherwise, we're never going to change. Well, thank you, Tony. Thank you for the plug as well. Well, thank you. you and thanks for the, for the 
opportunity to be on your show and speak my mind, which I'm probably a little bit outspoken, but that's the way it is. Tony Hall, former County Supervisor, San Francisco. It was great to have you on California Insider. Thanks, Eli. If you like the show and our content, you should go to insiderca.com and sign up to our newsletter because we never know what can happen with social media and other platforms in terms of distributing our content. If you'd like to come on the show and be an insider, you can reach out to us at cainsider at epochtimesca.com. Again, it's cainsider at epochtimesca.com. We would love to have you on the show to tell us what's going on in your field in California. Thank you for watching.